Hello everyone, I hope you have a great day. Today we are looking at some new malicious compliance stories, I hope you enjoy them. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, it really helps the channel to grow. And now let's start with the first story, shall we? The first story is called Until They Are Spotless. This event happened about a year ago. I worked at a fast food place at the time. During this particular lunch rush I was the only one on the register. We were severely understaffed, as usual. This was giving me the privilege of running around the lobby, restocking, sweeping, mopping, the general stuff. When the rush slowed a bit, but was definitely not over, my manager pulled up. She asked me to check the bathrooms. Alright, not a big deal. I haven't looked at them since I clocked in a good few hours ago. So I looked them both over and took mental notes that it needed some cleaning and then went back to taking orders. A good 5 or so minutes later I noticed my manager come out of the bathrooms looking a bit upset. We lock eyes and she makes a beeline toward me. Why haven't you taken care of the bathrooms as I said? I replied with a simple, I'm the only one up here in the middle of a rush, there's no time to clean them. She did not like that and angrily told me to grab a bucket with bleach and scrub the bathrooms until they were spotless. According to her, my pose would be covered by one of the other managers on duty. Alright, fine, I'll make them spotless. I proceeded to the back of the building and grabbed some cleaning supplies. And then I took my small arsenal to the bathroom and started to clean. Everything. I spent a good 30 minutes in each bathroom, scrubbing, mopping, spraying. All the while, people are coming in and out of the bathrooms, grubbing up all of my work. When transitioning between bathrooms, the manager that took over my post commented that it doesn't take that long to clean them. I just stated, she wants them spotless and continued. I finally finished after the better part of an hour and a half, replaced my arsenal and washed up. I was ready to get back to my post on the register, which was rather behind. All my hard work was in vain as the bathrooms were once again trashed, worse if I may add, less than an hour later. The next story is called, you want to approve everything? I recently got promoted to a management position. I manage a specialized team that operates with some degree of autonomy from the main part of the business. And I have been expected to build the team's processes and procedures from the ground up. It's a new type of team which hasn't existed within my company before nor I believe the industry at large. In order to ensure our team operates as efficiently as possible, I implemented a specific procedure. Our clients are required to sign a document, stating that they have reviewed all of the contracts and understand that by signing them, they are unable to make changes for change of mind reasons. It encourages them to make any changes they want before we proceed with their project, preventing unnecessary revisions and loss of time and money for both them and us. After implementing the procedure, I started to get constant requests for amendments to contracts, despite the clients signing off on the policy. When I would refer to this policy and my refusal to approve the request, the consultants liaising with the clients would circumvent me, approaching middle management. They are not my supervisors, but certainly above me in the hierarchy. And they would then override me, despite this being a company-wide informal policy that I had chosen to formalize within my team. During one particularly heated meeting with one particularly demanding middle manager, he insisted that I stop making any decisions regarding these changes. Instead, I should channel everything through him for approval. Okay, no worries, I will do exactly that. Every request I received, no matter how big or small, I advised the consultant, I'm so sorry, this has to go through the manager. At first he was approving the changes and we were raising contract variations and everything was moving smoothly. But then the requests started increasing. Clients who had made one request and received their revised documents were then immediately asking for more changes. In short, a steady drip feed of constant revisions snowballed into a very full inbox for the manager. The manager requested a meeting with my direct manager to discuss the volume of requests he is receiving. Not too much came from the meeting with my own manager, other than the manager now passing the buck to one of his direct reports. He is now responsible for the approval of the contract variations. I do consider this a win for me and that he learned how much work is involved with this constant revisions and I don't have to deal with it myself. It's his department's responsibility now. 
The poor guy responsible for the approvals is drowning, which does make me feel bad. He recently came to my office to discuss some changes and was completely flustered. I apologized to him and said, this is why I took the stance I did on denying these requests. He just looked at me sadly and said, I know, I know. Today, the manager had to get involved with a particularly demanding client. And, despite having refused my attempts to charge fees for contract variations previously, is now requesting we charge an even greater fee than I propose. I guess he now realizes how much work goes into these variations and why charging fees covers this work. Ultimately, he learned his lesson. But being the arrogant person he is won't relinquish control, even though it just moved the pressure point from him to one of his staff. The third story is called, I'm calling the police. This happened a few years ago. I was a manager slash bouncer at a very busy local bar. It was my job to cut people off and or bounce them if needed. I was in the process of cutting a woman off and she became very belligerent. Since this was also a karaoke bar, she just so happened to be called to the stage while I was in the middle of cutting her off. She marches past me and stumbles onto the stage. I have the karaoke horse cut her music off and continue on to the next singer. I go to the stage and escort the lady off. To be clear, I did not touch her at this moment. I'm a large woman and my boots at an inch and a half. So this very short woman complied rather easily until she continued to argue with me after the fact. She didn't want to leave and ended up punching me in the face. I put my arms around her and picked her up and headed towards the front door. She grabbed the protective glass cover on the host stand and shattered it all over the ground. Once she was outside, she was yelling and screaming that I had assaulted her and threatened to call the police to have me arrested. I quickly grabbed a business card for her and said, our address is on the card, just so you make sure you call the cops to the right place. They arrived and asked me who they needed to address. They arrested her. I'm certain they just put her in the drunk tank for the night, but she got what she wanted. The last story is called, keep your nose out of it. This was five years ago. The company I used to work for was a metalworks company in England. It had a 40 man strong team of fabricators and fitters. We were hiring for an electrical engineer for some automation that we were branching into. And I was also the guy training the engineers in what systems they would be using. I got word from the supervisor that they hired a guy and he was from Romania. They warned me to speak slowly and clearly, as English wasn't his strong suit. I told them to check his documents, to check that he can indeed work. But I was told to keep my nose out and do my job when I had spoken to the boss. He had a thick folder of pictures of electrical systems that he had built for home automation. I was a bit skeptical at first, especially as some of the pictures had stock photo plastered over them. I asked my boss to make sure he was sure about this and if he had done the checks to make sure he was allowed to work. I was again told the same thing. Keep your nose out of it and do your job. If you insist. A month or so goes by and I think the new guy understands how the system works and how it should be used with all the safety systems in place. So we take him to our side and leave him to do his thing while the rest of the guys get started on fitting security grill and railing all over the side. I agreed to have the rest of the team with the fitting and finishing, leaving our new engineer all alone. This was a big mistake. All the power on the side cuts out, the generator kicks in, all the lights come on and we discover smoke coming from the room where the fuse board is. An oh god moment has just dawned on everyone. What the guy had decided to do was to try and wire the system to a free face board without checking the board. This made the situation worse as he somehow blew the entire board up and had to explain to the electrician why he has to install a new board. The second red flag came in the shape of a van filled with immigration officers wanting to speak to the guy about him working when he shouldn't have been. I asked if they had any proof of it being the same guy and indeed it was. I pulled the boss to one side and told him the immigration officers want to talk to the new guy and the boss. I could see the terror in his face and panic in his voice as he said, call the new guy in so I can get rid of him fast. I politely reminded him that he should have checked before hiring him. He looked defeated. The immigration officers decide to wait around the corner and just as the Romanian walked in, the van pulls in and swoops on the poor man. 
They slap him in cuffs, the officers then load him into the van and drive off. A few weeks pass by and the boss thinks he is in the clear. A few weeks later and he is sent a letter telling him to make his way to the nearest home office building. To this day I still don't know what they said to him. But he came back two hours later and closed up the workshop and never reopened. It turns out he is still paying off a massive fine and couldn't afford to reopen. He was later arrested for tax evasion and fraud. The Romanian guy and I became friends and the home office helped him become a British citizen with some help that they offered, so he wasn't removed. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think about the stories in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye bye.